Hello children. In this video lecture, I will explain you chapter 3 of Beehive. Our chapter 3 is The Little Girl. Written by Catherine Mansfield. Let's take a little bit of uh, knowledge about the author. Catherine Mansfield is one of the most highly regarded short story writers of the 20th century. She played her part in shaping modernism by experimenting with style, subject matter and theme in a body of work that redefined the genre. As well as short stories, she also wrote letters, reviews and journals in, in a prolific career which was cut short by her ultimately death at the age of 34. She died at, at the age of 34 and she has written various kinds of things. Now let's know more about the chapter. This story is about the relationship between a strict father and his daughter. Initially, the father is shown as very hardworking and a strict disciplinarian. Showing his anger when the daughter puts on, puts an obstacle in his work without knowing it. However, in the end, the girl's perception of her father changes when her mother is hospitalized and her father takes care of her with love and sympathy. Let's see this story children in detail. But before that, let's know about the characters of the chapter. So here is first character is Kezia. She is uh, like a normal girl. She used afraid and hated her father. But later on she realized immense love for her father for her. Second character is Kezia's father. He is a strict person but he loves and cares for her daughter. Even he made her feel comfortable when she was getting nightmare. Third, Kezia's mother. She is also a strict lady. She desired that Kezia should follow orders of her father. Kezia's grandmother. She is an old humble lady. She took care of Kezia when she was scolded and beaten by her father. She wanted Kezia to have good relationship with her father and she always used to encourage Kezia to talk to her father to give him surprise gift. Children, so here one more minor character is there. Uh, Alice, the cook of the house. Now let's start, uh, let's begin the explanation of the chapter. Children, I will read first of all the text and the remain and that part I am going to explain you. So listen it carefully and with full of concentration you need to understand this chapter. Now I will not provide you any more summary. I will tell summary orally from this video. We have in our textbook beginning of the chapter before you read means before we start uh, our reading of the chapter. Here few things are said like uh, do you feel you know your parents better now than when you were much younger? Yes obviously we have this kind of experience few years back maybe we know less about our parents but now at this age you know better more about them now you are able to perhaps you now understand the reasons for some of their actions that used to upset you earlier right parents used to say no to you don't do that thing don't do that uh, don't uh, do such kind of things at that moment maybe you felt bad but now you are able to realize why they were saying no. The story about a little girl whose feelings for her father change from her fear to understanding will probably find an echo in every home. Every home has this story. That's why 
the title is given the little girl not kezia okay so it's common for each and every family okay uh, when parents call them it's called any child the child feels bad why my parents are doing with me this kind of rude behavior but later on when they understand very well they came to know the reason then they feel loved and feel affection for their parents now let's start an explanation to the little girl he was a figure to be feared and avoided every morning before going to work he came into her room and gave her a casual kiss to which she responded with goodbye father as we know this story is of little girl kezia and who is the figure of to be feared here was kezia's father so the opening line of the story indicates the fear that kezia has for her father she is afraid of her father and always try to remain away from her father every morning it was routine of kezia's father that he would visit kezia's room and give kiss to her and in reply kezia used to wish her father goodbye this indicates this action shows us father's love for kezia and oh there was a glad sense of relief when she heard the noise of the carriage growing fainter and fainter down the long road as soon as her father left with a carriage from home that sound reduced gradually kezia felt relaxed she would feel relieved that her father had left why she felt relieved Do you know that question arises in your mind because Kezia felt relieved because you she used to frightened of her father. She was afraid of him, and so she felt relaxed when he left home. In the evening, when he came home, she stood near the staircase and heard his loud voice in the hall. Used to when his father come. Uh, came back in the evening when he would return home she would stand near the staircase and would hear his loud noise in the hall his loud voice is used to afraid her bring me tea bring my tea into the drawing room hasn't the paper come yet mother go and see if my papers out there and bring me my slippers as soon as he entered the house he would immediately start ordering things to bring his tea into the drawing room he wanted newspaper he asked his mother to check whether the newspaper had come yet outside or not and he would ask he would ask to bring his slippers too so he used to give orders this shows us his strict behavior in the beginning of the chapter to us kezia's mother would call to her if you are a good girl you can come down and take off father's boots slowly the girl would slip down the stairs more slowly still across the hall and push open the drawing room door used to her mother called kezia Uh, and commanded her to take off her father's boots even she added that if she was a good girl then surely she would obey her command means kezia is not going to deny that thing kezia slowly and unwillingly came down and opened the drawing room door she did this unwillingly because she had not wished to face her father because she was too much scared of him 
By that time, he had his spectacles on and looked at her over them in a way what was terrifying to the little girl. Kezia's father was sitting in the drawing room on the sofa and wearing his spectacles. He was looking at her. This action of him totally frightened this little girl. As she, as she had too much of fear of her father. And in addition, he was looking at her and watching her actions, which made this timid little girl more frightened and frightened. Well, Kezia, hurry up and pull off these shoes, these boots. Take them outside. Have you been a good girl today? Due to fear, as Kezia was slow and unwillingly reached to her father. To that, her father told her to hurry up and to pull off those boots and keep them out of the room. And father further asked her if she had been a good girl that day. I d don't know, father. You d don't know. If you stat stutter like that, mother will have to take you to the doctor. As her father asked her in a strict tone, so she was not confident while replying him. She was full of fear. She replied that she did not know. Her father imitated her and he stammered same as her and told her that if she stuttered like that, then her mother would have to take her to the doctor for a checkup for this problem. She never stuttered with other people had quite given it up but only with father because then she was trying too hard to say the words properly. Here the author talks with the readers through this paragraph. The author gives explanation on behalf of Kezia that she never stammered while talking with other people. This happened only because she lacked confidence in front of her father and due to fear of him, she tried very hard to speak properly. What's the matter? What are you looking so wretched about? Mother, I wish you taught this child not to appear on the brink of suicide. Here, Kezia, carry my teacup back to the table carefully. As Kezia's father was observing her, he looked at her and asked what the matter was and further inquired why she was looking so sad and further told her mother that she should teach Kezia to behave in a better way and added that she should not appear in front of him like that as if she was about to commit suicide. As she was looking unhappy and seemed like her that she wished to end her life and for the commanded Kezia to give him his teacup back to the table carefully. He was so big, his hands and his neck, especially his mouth. When he yawned, thinking about him alone was like thinking about a giant. The author is sharing here Kezia's feeling. She is saying, As Kezia was thinking and feeling that her father was so big, she compared him with a giant. She felt that his hand, neck and mouth were so huge, especially when he yawned. He seemed a monster while yawning for her. On Sunday afternoon, 
On Sunday afternoons, grandmother sent her down to the drawing room to have a nice talk with father and mother. But the little girl always found mother reading and father stretched out on the sofa, his handkerchief on his face and his feet on one of the best cushions, sleeping soundly and snoring. Every Sunday afternoon, her grandmother insisted Kezia to go downstairs to the drawing room in order to spend time with her parents because she thought and felt that Kezia should behave in a nice way in front of her parents. And they had a formal get-together as she felt that they neglect Kezia. So, to increase their bonding, she insisted her to do so. But when she reached in drawing room to meet her parents, she mostly found them busy. As her mother was busy with reading and her father was busy sleeping and snoring. He used to sleep on sofa and kept his legs on the cushion and handkerchief on his face. This shows us that they both even did not care about the girl. They were busy doing their activities and spending their time on their way only. So for the sake of family and to give as comfort to Kezia, grandmother used to insist Kezia to sit with her parents and spend few hours with them at least on Sunday afternoons. She sat on a stool, gravely watched him until he woke and stretched and asked the time. Then looked at her. Don't stare so, Kezia. You looked like a little brown owl. Forcibly, Kezia, sent by her grandmother um, Sunday afternoons, she used to come down unwillingly in the drawing room and sat on a stool. Without activity and any conversation, she used to sit. She always sat silently, watching her father till he would wake up. As soon as her father woke up and stretched his body, he asked the time and looked at Kezia. He observed that Kezia was sitting on the stool and was looking at him without any expression. So he commanded her not to stare at him like that and commented that she was just looking like an owl. One day when she was kept indoors with a cold, her grandmother told her that father's birthday was next week and suggested she should make him a pin cushion for a gift out of a beautiful piece of yellow silk. One day Kezia was not feeling well due to cold. So she supposed to stay at home. So her grandmother suggested her to make a surprise birthday gift for his father as next week his father father's birthday was coming. So she suggested Kezia, Kezia to make a pin cushion for him and she also gave her a yellow colored fabric silk cloth to make the Cushion. Laboriously, with her double cotton, the little girl stitched three sides. But what to fill with it, it with? That was the question. The grandmother was out in the garden and she went, <coughs> wandered into mother's bedroom to look for scraps. On the bed table, she discovered a great many sheets of fine paper, gathered them up, tore them into tiny pieces and stuffed her case, then sewed up the fourth side. Kesia had put a lot of efforts to stitch the cloth from three sides. For the pink cushion, she took double cotton thread to stitch it. Now she was thinking about the material to feel in it. Her bag was ready. 
but she did not have any idea. She was confused about the feeling material. Moreover, at that time, grandmother was in a garden. So she started searching for the some scrap, some feeling material to make pin cushion in her mother's bedroom. This little girl got near the bed on table. A heap of sheet of paper was there. So she gathered them all in her little hands and tore them into small pieces. She filled the same into the cushion. And then she stitched the fourth side of the cushion. And she had prepared birthday gift for her father. Children, maybe you have done this kind of thing for your parents. Many children have a habit to give surprise to their parents. And intentionally or intentionally, May you have harmed the things of your parents, right? Sometimes this thing happened. Same thing is done here by Kezia. As she was not aware that pile of papers belonged to whom and importance of it. And she had used it to fill the pillow. Now, let's see what happens further. That night... There was a hue and cry in the house. Father's great speech for the port authority had been lost. Rooms were searched. Servants questioned. Finally, mother came into Kezia's room. Now, there was a lot of shouting in the house because Kezia's father had prepared a speech for the port authority for a particular meeting. And that was lost. He was not able to find it. The family searched everywhere. They asked even servants. But no one knew where the papers were. They did not have any clue where the sheets of paper had gone. And finally the mother reached into Kezia's room. Children, as a reader, we are aware that where these papers are. These papers are turned into small pieces and filled in the pillow of surprise but a gift by Kezia. The whole family was clueless about the papers and now mother is in the Kezia's room. Let's see further what happens to Kezia when family comes to know that by mistake Kezia had torn that papers into pieces for pillow, especially for gift. Kezia, I suppose you did not see some papers on a table in our room. Oh yes, she said. I tore them up to up for my surprise. What? screamed mother. Come straight down to the dining room this instant. <coughs> Kezia's mother asked her whether she had seen some papers on a table of her parents' room. Innocently and positively Kezia replied and further added that she had torn them into pieces for her father's surprise. <coughs> for her father's surprise but a gift. She even explained that she needed them for stuffing into the cushion. Unknowingly, Kezia had done a big mistake. Her mother got very angry when she heard that Kezia had torn the speech which her father is searching for. She ordered Kezia to come down into the dining room at that very moment, at the same time. And she was tracked down to where father was, pacing to and fro, hands behind his neck, back. Now Kezia forcibly came down where her father was. He was in very angry mood and he was so much frightened. He is full of tension 
and in a very angry mood his hands were at the back side he was full of tension because his important document had been lost which kezia had torn into pieces well he said sharply mother explain he stopped and stared at the child did you do that mm, no she whispered mother go up to her room and fetch down the dim, damn thing see that the child's put to bed this instant these were the words of kezia's father kezia and her mother both were standing in front of him in the dining room he inquired about the details mother explained him the incident he got more angry and in that mood he was looking at the child he furiously asked kezia if she had torn the papers kezia was so scared that again she started sam- stammering and then kezia's father ordered her mother to go and bring that cushion downstairs and ask her to put kezia to bed at that very moment kezia's father referred cushion as a damn thing because he was angry at the cushion because kezia had torn his important document to prepare that cushion crying too much to explain she lay in the shadowed room watching the evening light make a sad little pattern on the floor then father came into the room with a ruler in his hands i am going to beat you for this he said oh no no she screamed hiding under the bed clothes Kezia wished to explain her action, why she did so. She wanted to say that she was innocent. She did not mean to harm her father. She was just preparing a surprise birthday gift for him. Kezia was very sad. She had been happy that she had prepared a surprise gift for her father, and he would like it. But accidentally, she had done a big mistake. These all thoughts were coming in her mind, and when she lay in her shadowed room, watching a pattern made by a shadowed light, as she was thinking the same at that moment, her father entered the room with a ruler in his hands, and announced that he would beat her for her mistake. Kezia cried in a loud voice, not to beat her for her mistake, and hid under the bed cloth, bed sheet. She hid under the bed sheet, and urging her father not to beat her, he pulled them aside. Sit up, he ordered, and hold out your hands. you must be taught once and for all not to touch what does not belong to you but it was for your b- b- birthday down came to the ruler on her little pink palms kezia's father so furious so angry so he took the bed sheet aside and he wished to give her punishment he wanted to teach her a lesson so he ordered kezia to sit up and hold out her hands he hold her that once he should he told her that once he should teach her a lesson that the things which did not belong to her should not be touched kezia tried to explain that it would be his birthday so she wished to prepare a surprise gift for him she searched for something to feel in her cushion and so she torn the pages into small bits to stuff them into the cushion 
she was not aware that pages were important document for him but her father did not listen to any excuse he hit the palms of her hand with a ruler <coughs> here we came to know that why kezia's father was being strict to her why was he punishing her because he wanted kezia to know these things once for all that she should not touch the thing that does not belong to her he wanted to teach her this thing so that it benefited her in her life she is a small child now and she is unable to understand what is important and what is not so he wished to teach her lesson and he gave punishment to kezia hours later when grandma had wrapped her in a shawl and rocked her in the rocking chair the child clung to her soft body what did god make fathers for she sobbed due to punishment kezia a little girl was so frightened that she could not come out of that fright the thought was constantly in her mind that her father had hit her small little palms with the ruler to give a relief from the shock and that right her grandmother had wrapped her in a shawl she was sitting on her grandmother's lap for many hours and she was trying to pacify the child she was sitting on the rocking chair and was trying to put kezia to sleep and kezia had tightly hug and hold her grandmother due to shock she was not able to forget such a strict and rude behavior of her father what did god make fathers for she sobbed Here is a clean hanky darling blow your nose go to sleep pat you will forget all about it in the morning i tried to explain to father but he was too upset to listen tonight kezia was not comfortable with the thought that was going on in her mind so she was crying constantly and asked her grandmother for what reason god had made fathers she hated her father as she did not realize what mistake she had done her heart broke completely so she said god should not have made fathers as we know grandmother was trying to pacify her she gave her a handkerchief to blow her nose in it and went and told her to go to sleep she added that by morning kezia would forget that beating Kezia tried to justify herself. She said that she was trying to explain him the reason for tearing the sheets of paper, but he was not ready to listen her. So again, we see that the child was so innocent. She did not realize that her father hit her to teach her a lesson, so that she did not touch anything that did not belong to her. But the child never forgot. Next time. she saw him she quickly put both hands behind her back and a red color flew into her cheeks but kezia never forgot the beating that she had got whenever she saw her father near by her she would keep her hands behind her back because she felt that maybe he would hit her again and red color flew into her cheeks whenever she saw her father she got scared and her cheeks got full of red color the mcdonalds lived next door they had five children looking through a gap in the fence the little girl saw them playing tag in the evening the father with the baby mau on his shoulders 
two little girls hanging on to his coat pockets ran around and round the flower bed shaking with laughter once she saw the boys turn the horse on him and he tried to catch them laughing all the time then it was she decided there were different sorts of fathers now the author introduces here neighbors of kezia macdonalds were living the next door mr macdonald had five children one day kezia was looking into the gap of a fence she would see that the family was playing a game tag in the evening and had lot of fun in the game tag children uh one person used to catch the other person so they were, the family was playing the same game the children along with father enjoyed a lot mao a little baby of the family was sitting on the shoulder of mr mac mr macdonald and two little girls were hanging on his coat pocket this shows the bond of children with their father they were very much attached to their father then they <coughs> then they ran around the flower beds of garden and they would laugh and laugh and laugh one day she saw the little sons of mr macdonald open the water pipe of the garden and try to wet him but mr macdonald was not angry with them he tried to catch them and he was laughing he was enjoying each and every fun moments with them and he used to have a lot of fun with each other all these things were very strange for kezia because her father was just the opposite of mr Mac- macdonald when kezia saw mr macdonald she realized that he was quite opposite to her father she felt that god had made various kinds of father suddenly one day mother became ill and she and grandmother went to hospital the little girl was left alone in the house with alice the cook that was all right in the daytime but while alice was putting her to bed she grew suddenly afraid suddenly one day kezia's mother fell ill so she was taken to the hospital and the grandmother also went along with her now the little girl was alone in the house with the cook the name of the cook is alice kezia was fine during the day but at night when the cook put kezia to bed all alone kezia started feeling scared she felt afraid because for the first time she was alone in a room without her grandmother what i will what will i do if i have a nightmare she asked i often have nightmare and then grandma granny takes me into her bed i can't stay in the dark it all gets whispery you just go to sleep child said alice pulling off her socks and don't you scream and wake your poor pa so kezia asked the cook alice if she had bad dream what would she, what would she do all alone she further explained cook that whenever she had nightmares she would go to her grandmother and she would sleep with her so she meant to say that she could not sleep alone in the dark because she would be scared and she could hear different kinds of whispering sounds which made her feel that there was someone around her alice told her to go and sleep quietly she removed kezia's socks and asked her not to scream because her father was sleeping in the next room and he would awake if she screamed but poor kezia 
was helpless but the same old nightmare came and the butcher with a knife and a rope who came nearer and nearer smiling that dreadful smile while she could not move could only stand still caring crying out grandma grandma she woke shivering to see father beside her bed a candle in his hand what's the matter he said but she had seen the same old bad dream the butcher with a knife and a rope and would up came near kesia he had a dreadful smile a weird smile dangerous smile on his face and once kesia saw him she felt that she could not move she was standing as it is she was bitterly terrified so in her sleep kesia cried out for help she called for her grandmother when kesia woke up she was shivering she was trembling and she saw that her father was standing next to her bed and he was holding a candle in his hand kesia's father had heard her screams and he had heard that kesia was calling for her grandmother and he had come to help her oh a butcher a knife i want granny he blew out the candle bent down and caught up the child in his arms carrying her along the passage to the big bedroom a newspaper was on the bed he put away the paper then carefully tucked up the child he lay down beside her it seemed she crept close to him snuggled her head under his arm held tightly to his shirt then the dark did not matter she lay still here rub your feet again my legs and get them warm said father the father asked kesia what was the matter why she was screaming kesia was still scared due to the bad dream she said that there was a butcher he was holding a dreadful knife and she wanted her grandmother so kesia's father had blown off the candle he lifted her and carried her to his bedroom here we can see affection and love of kesia's father for her kesia's father's bedroom was just next to hers so he took her in his bedroom a newspaper was on his bed he kept it aside <coughs> the newspaper and kept kesia carefully on his bed and covered her with the spread sheet bed sheet <coughs> he slept beside her at that moment kesia felt her father's affection and love so she went close to him she moved in a comfortable position towards her father she kept her head comfortably under his arm and held his shirt tightly so she would not feel scared again she had overcome fear of her father as well as of darkness she felt comfortable with him so she lay still with him her father asked kesia to rub her feet against his legs so that they became warm tired out he slept before the little girl a funny feeling came over her poor father not so big after all and with no one to look after him he was harder than grandmother but it was a nice hardness and every day he had to work and was too tired to be a mr macdonald she had torn up all his beautiful writing she stirred suddenly and sighed what's the matter asked the father another dream oh said the little girl my head's on your heart i can hear it going what a big heart you have got father dear
Her father was so tired, so he slept before her. Now, funny feeling came in Kezia felt for her father. Kezia realized her mistake and she had affection towards her father. She felt that her father was a poor man. He worked so hard. He was not so big as she found him to be earlier. Even she felt that there was no one who looked after him. He got so tired that he went off to sleep and did not play with her like Mr. MacDonald did with his children. Now she suddenly remembered her mistake that she had torn up his important document, the speech which he had written and due to all this realization, she took a deep break. She realized that she was wrong and because of that reason, her father had been so strict with her. Although Kezia's father was asleep when he heard her sigh, he heard the sound that Kezia made and asked her what the matter was. Was she again watching a bad dream? Kezia replied to her father that she had placed her head on her father's heart and she could hear his heartbeat. And she complimented her father that he had a big heart. So Kezia is showing her love for her father as she had realized that her father also loved her. So children, here is such a nice story of this little girl and first of all, hatred and love for her father. In the end, she felt an immense love for her father. Children, for your kind reference and I have given here introduction and exercise question answer that you have to write in a neat and clean handwriting in your notebook along with the meanings within two days you have to complete the work when you get this lecture and remember each and every answer for your upcoming test. I hope you have all have enjoyed this story of the little girl. Remember it through these question answers. Do your homework very well and in time with neat handwriting again I am repeating children thank you